China is on the brink of launching its first ever reusable rocket, or is it? Earlier this week, China planned what would have been its first orbital mission to include an attempted booster recovery, a major milestone for the country's reusable launch ambitions. But that highly anticipated test was first scrubbed and then quietly postponed indefinitely for reasons that remain undisclosed. Commercial launch firm Landspace appeared poised to fly its stainless steel reusable medium-lift JUK-3 rocket from the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Test Zone at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center late on November 28 Eastern. High winds forced a shift to a new two-hour window spanning late November 30th Eastern into early December 1st. Then, early on November 29th, Chinese media reported that the ground team had stood down entirely, offering no hint of when the next attempt might come. Airspace closure notices, normally a telltale sign of an imminent launch, were withdrawn, and no new notices matching the mission profile have appeared since. Ju K3 might have launched much earlier, but its schedule was overtaken by a series of crewed Shenzhou mission events at Ju Quan. The rocket was initially expected to fly soon after the planned late October launch of Shenzhou 21 and the early November return of the Shenzhou 20 crew. However, the Shenzhou 20 return was delayed when engineers discovered suspected debris damage to the spacecraft. That incident forced mission planners to reassign the Shenzhou 21 spacecraft for the Shenzhou 20 crew's return and to prepare an emergency launch of Shenzhou 22. These unexpected changes appear to have pushed the Ju K3 launch further down the schedule. So, even though China will need a couple more days to launch its first reusable rocket, that doesn't make the event any less highly anticipated. This is the rocket that, even Elon Musk has reportedly suggested, could end up being a stronger vehicle than SpaceX's workhorse, the Falcon 9. I'll explain why later. But first, what kind of rocket is the Ju K3 really? Ju K3 is a large, reusable, liquid-fueled launch vehicle built around a 4.5-meter diameter core and a 5.2-meter payload fairing. In its initial Block 1 form, it stands just over 66 meters tall, weighs about 570 tons at liftoff, and produces more than 750 tons of thrust. The first stage is built primarily from stainless steel and powered by nine TQ-12A Methalox engines. Equipped with grid fins, landing legs, and an RCS system, the booster can steer, return, and land propulsively for reuse, following an approach similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. In this early configuration, Ju K3 can place 11.8 tons into low Earth orbit when fully expended, or 8 tons if the first stage performs a downrange landing. The forthcoming Block 2 upgrade will raise these capabilities significantly. When expended, Block 2 can deliver 21.3 tons to orbit. With a downrange landing, it can carry 18.3 tons, and with a full return to the launch site, it can still lift 12.5 tons. Block 2 will also replace the nine TQ-12A engines with nine uprated TQ-12B models, increasing total thrust to roughly 900 tons. Landspace expects each booster to be reused about 20 times, with the potential for additional flights after further certification. The second stage carries a single TQ-15B Methalox engine, producing roughly 100 tons of thrust. When fully realized, the Block 2 version of Ju K3 will stand 76.6 meters tall and weigh around 660 tons once fueled, although both stages will continue to share the same 4.5 meter diameter. The 5.2 meter fairing remains unchanged and separates into two halves to release payloads in orbit. Elon Musk recently remarked that Ju K3 surpasses Falcon 9 on several key performance metrics, noting that Landspace has blended aspects of Starship, such as stainless steel and methalox, into a Falcon 9-like architecture, which he said could allow the vehicle to outperform Falcon 9. He added, however, that Starship is in another league, and suggested that even if Ju K3 eventually overtakes Falcon 9, SpaceX will already be launching Starship at scale. Ju K3's development campaign has been notably fast and successful. Over roughly two years, Landspace completed a series of hop tests culminating in a 10-kilometer flight with an engine relight and landing in September 2024. 
Shortly afterward, the company conducted a 45-second static fire, later matched by flight hardware that included an integrated second stage. Related components have already flown aboard the company's JU-K2 and JU-K2E launch vehicles, further accelerating testing. Beyond JU-K3, Landspace is working on a Starship-class launcher known informally as JU-K-X. This much larger vehicle will use a new 200-ton thrust Methalox engine called the Lanyon 20. By September, the engine had completed more than 30 test firings and had reached approximately half of its intended thrust output. The delay of the Juki 3 flight comes amid newly issued policies affecting China's commercial space sector. On November 29th, the China National Space Administration CNSA, announced that it had established a new department dedicated to overseeing the country's rapidly expanding commercial space industry. The announcement came just days after CNSA released an action plan aimed at more closely integrating commercial space activities into China's broader national space development strategy. In recent years, China's commercial space sector has made historic strides, powered by supportive policies, technological breakthroughs, growing market demand, and collaborative innovation across the entire industrial chain. According to a CNSA official, the number of commercial space companies in China has now exceeded 600, with the sector's development potential continuing to unfold, while maintaining a strong emphasis on safety. CNSA also recently released an action plan for 2025 to 2027 to promote the high-quality, safe growth of commercial space activities and to further integrate the commercial sector into the country's overall space development framework. The race to launch China's reusable rocket is also heating up. Besides Juki-3, there are two other contenders now lined up at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center in the country's northwest for flights that could make history. On the pads stand the state-owned Long March 12A and Space Pioneer's Tianlong 3, both of which are expected to be used to build China's massive internet satellite constellations and to compete internationally on low-cost, rapid turnaround missions. Both the Long March 12A and Juki 3 are targeting December launch attempts that aim not only to reach orbit, but also to return their first stages to Earth, touching down roughly 400 kilometers downrange. Around November 25th, the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology's Long March 12A was seen en route to its launch pad at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center, marking the first public appearance of a fully assembled vehicle. The rocket burns liquid methane and liquid oxygen and features two stages, each 3.8 meters in diameter. Its first stage uses seven Long Yun engines developed by Jujo Yunjian, while the second stage relies on a single vacuum optimized YF209 engine. Together, they are designed to place up to 12,000 kilograms into orbit. The booster is intended to be recovered through a propulsive landing burn onto four deployable legs, with grid fins providing aerodynamic control during descent. Very little information about Long March 12A's development has been released, leaving much of the program shrouded in uncertainty. In January, the vehicle completed a largely successful high-altitude hop test, though it experienced software issues during the splashdown phase. A second-stage static fire followed in Haiyang around August, and in November, the rocket's transporter erector arrived at the launch site. Meanwhile, Zhuzhou Yunjian's work to validate its Long Yun engines for reusable operation has been one of the few elements of the program visible from the outside. Because the development campaign has been so opaque, it remains unclear whether the vehicle now at Quan will undergo additional testing, such as a full-duration static fire, before attempting its debut flight later in December, or whether the launch itself will serve as the culmination of the program's verification efforts. Tianlong-3 is also designed for reuse, although it is not expected to attempt a landing on its maiden flight. Developed by the private aerospace firm Space Pioneer, Tianlong-3 is a medium-lift orbital launch vehicle intended to offer low-cost, partially reusable access to space. Its first stage is built to perform autonomous vertical landings and is designed for up to 10 reuses, positioning the rocket as a competitor within China's rapidly expanding commercial launch sector. The vehicle is aimed at delivering medium-class payloads to low Earth orbit and sun-synchronous orbit. The first stage is powered by nine Tianhuo-12 Carolox engines. 
Each engine produces 1,350 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust, with a vacuum-specific impulse of 335 seconds, and 1,090 kilonewtons of sea level thrust, corresponding to a sea level-specific impulse of 285 seconds. They can throttle between 40 and 110 percent, operate on a gas generator cycle, and gimbal for steering. The stage's 3.8-meter diameter propellant tanks use a triangular grid-stiffened structure similar to the one Space Pioneer employed on the Tianlong-2 first stage. The second stage uses a single vacuum-optimized TH-12-volt engine. Tianlong-3's standard payload fairing measures 4.2 meters across and 12 meters tall, accommodating spacecraft up to 3.8 meters in diameter and 10 meters in height. A larger fairing option, 5.2 meters wide and 14 meters tall, is also available for bulkier payloads. After departing Zhangjiagang on November 7, the two-stage Tianlong-3 arrived at Space Pioneer's facilities at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center before November 18. The rocket has since been assembled and placed on its pad. At Jiuquan, the company has constructed and tested a full suite of ground infrastructure, including a horizontal assembly building, propellant storage tanks, fueling systems, a flame trench beneath a launch table with a transporter erector, tested in July 2024, and a pair of large lightning towers. Space Pioneer intends to expand its Juchuan operations further, enabling two simultaneous launch campaigns and as many as 60 launches per year once a second pad is added. With a flight vehicle now on the pad, the company can begin full-scale readiness tests, loading the rocket with kerosene and liquid oxygen, possibly culminating in a short static fire. Fully fueled, Tianlong-3 weighs about 590 tons. If performed, this static fire would be the third ignition of the booster, following a successful ground test in September. All three of these rockets share a common design philosophy, medium-lift, two-stage vehicles with first stages built for repeated use, typically between 10 and 20 flights. The approach follows the breakthrough SpaceX demonstrated a decade ago, proving that reusability can sharply reduce launch costs and dramatically increase flight cadence. China's progress toward that goal has come with setbacks. Last year, Tianlong-3 unexpectedly lifted off during what was supposed to be a static fire test, crashing into nearby hills in a fiery explosion. Space Pioneer later traced the accident to a faulty connection between the rocket and its test stand. Landspace has faced problems of its own, with its Juche 2E rocket failing on its third flight in July. Although the company said the malfunction was unrelated to Juche 3, the two vehicles share a similar second stage engine design, keeping analysts watchful. In January, China's state owned contractor conducted a vertical takeoff and landing test of the Long March 12A that reportedly reached 70 kilometers. The results were never made public leading observers to suspect the flight may not have gone smoothly. All of this has unfolded against the backdrop of Falcon 9's unmatched launch cadence, dozens of flights per year, driven in large part by the steady deployment of SpaceX's own Starlink constellation. China's private and state-backed launch providers are now pushing hard to build the capacity needed for their own broadband mega-constellations. SpaceX still leads the world in operational reusability, but China's rapid progress is narrowing the technological gap. If both Tianlong-3 and Juche-3 reach orbit and can demonstrate reliable booster recovery, they would give China medium-lift capabilities far more aligned with its satellite deployment ambitions. Reusable rockets are becoming increasingly important both as commercial workhorses and as strategic infrastructure. For the United States, the question is no longer whether China can match the Falcon 9 model, but how quickly it can scale these systems to serve national objectives.